Thank you so much for inviting me today. I haven't been to one of these conferences before, but I am really impressed with your agenda and uh, wish that I had been able to be with you for the whole time. Uh, I do have uh, one of my staff, Tushara, here. So uh, if there's anything you don't like about my speech today, uh, you, can, you can tell uh, Tushara and then he will sanitize that for my <laughs> consumption when we get back to the office. You know, there is so much information out there being shared right now. Uh, it's a little bit of a slow week uh, in our shop in that this is only the second flood conference I've addressed this week. Uh, but I'm gonna try to make a few more next week. Uh, and I think it is hugely important that we get together and share the information and technologies that are out there. Uh, that's really the first step uh, some of what I'm going to talk about, though, is how do we have uh, a structure in place so we can take some of the things that we've learned, particularly in our science and engineering and technical communities, and put them in the hands of, of the policymakers uh, who are really going to be the ones responsible for planning a more resilient region. Now, I am a big believer in uh, short definitions. Uh, I looked at a few different definitions of resiliency, and I, I found all of them a little bit long. Uh, so I guess mine is uh, simply, do we have the ability to bounce back? Now, that I'll unpack a little bit. Uh, part of bouncing back from a shock, such as, say, Hurricane Harvey, uh, is avoiding the shock altogether. So we're gonna talk a little bit about mitigation. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about recovery. And we're gonna talk a little bit maybe about thinking differently uh, about how we're set up to respond as uh, many independent agencies and local governments uh, towards more regional approaches. And I think our objectives really are in the following order. Obviously, uh, to prevent loss of life harm to people live there, but uh, we really have to think about, you know, how, how does that affect the school feeder pattern? How does that affect local retail services? How does that affect how people get to their jobs? Uh, how does that affect the tax rolls? And we're really right now only beginning to sift through all of those impacts, let alone design sound policies to be more resilient in the future. And then the final thing is, uh, as you're all aware, uh, the world is watching us. Uh, I think we've gotten uh, a lot of negative press, at least in the, the city planning realm, which is kind of where I spend my time, unwarranted uh, in my view also. But I do think how we come forward after Hurricane Harvey uh, is going to be something that is looked at uh, by companies and individuals looking to relocate in this region, I think it is incumbent upon us uh, to be able to tell our story and to talk about our game plan for going forward. It's also incumbent upon me to use the right slide advancer. If I haven't broken it, uh, okay. So, Houston Galveston Area Council, as was mentioned, is a council of governments. Uh, we are a voluntary association of 13 counties and 134 cities. Uh, technically, we are a political subdivision of the state of Texas, which means we can receive certain grants and, and perform certain actions. But uh, it's important for me to note we don't tax and we don't regulate. And in my mind, that is actually a valuable uh, thing to be able to tell people because I think HGAC, and we prefer you call it HGAC and not, I've heard some people say HGAC, and that just doesn't, uh, what were you talking about, Swiss German? Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah, it sounds uh, a little bit harsh to me. So uh, it, it takes a few more syllables, but HGAC uh, is a place, I think, where we can come together and float ideas in a way that uh, entities that tax and regulate may have greater difficult, difficulty in so doing. Uh, just a little bit of uh, factoids about us to put our region in perspective. Our population would rank us number 14 
uh, among states in the U.S. And our uh, square mileage is a little bit bigger than the state of Massachusetts. So when we talk about, you know, levels of government in Texas, everything is truly bigger. Uh, we are a very big area uh, that really has, has not done a lot of, of pulling together on a massive scale uh, in, in response to events like Harvey. Uh, HGAC has been around for 50 years, but I would say that is fairly young in government time. Texas is still a very independent state. Uh, we have a lot of strong feelings about home rule, local control, uh, I think rightful skepticism about adding a lot of extra layers of government to things. And uh, frankly, we believe that uh, our, our programs, unlike in some other states where regional councils have state mandated roles, uh, really should be directed by the local governments that comprise our membership. So that is really our philosophy. Uh, if, if something is, is uh, an area we can provide help or solutions and we can find a way to pay for it, uh, we will probably look at getting into that business, and if, if people don't want us working in that business, uh, we're, we're not going to force ourselves into the mix. I will say that uh, that is an evolving situation, and certainly Hurricane Harvey and our other recent flooding events uh, have spurred uh, greater interest in maybe uh, coming up with more regional solutions to things yet to be defined. I'll also notice in turn, or note in terms of vulnerability, and I haven't compared this with everybody else, but uh, I would be very surprised if there is any metropolitan area in the U.S. that has more miles of streams and bayous and rivers. Uh, I don't know how we'd stack up on shoreline, but we, we have the whole family of vulnerabilities, and oh, by the way, we're pretty flat, and it rains a lot, and uh, that's, uh, I guess, the Cajun Navy. So this, this is what vulnerability looks like in real life. And I just want to point out that uh, intersection in Meyerland is, is not too far from where my house once stood. And even less than a year away, and I know we haven't forgotten, it, it is, I think, worth our continuing to look at these pictures uh, to really think about, you know, when we talk about vulnerability, these are the impacts. This is what we're working hard for uh, to come up with solutions. Now, HGAC is involved in, in a whole bunch of different programs, and I'm not going to go into all of them, but I am going to talk about some things we're doing in the following five areas, and I distinguish these as, as different aspects of, uh, of resiliency planning. Uh, you know, the first is, is just looking at our risks and learning from the past and preparing. I mentioned a little bit about recovery, uh, both short, mid, and long term. Uh, mitigation, how do we avoid the shock rather than withstanding it. Uh, resiliency, I'll, I'll lift out of that even though these are subsumed within it uh, a little bit later near the end of the presentation. And then, as I see you focused on a lot in this conference, uh, what, what are the data and tools that we can inform our decisions with in all these areas. So in terms of preparedness, uh, I think a couple of the most important things we've worked on are evacuation planning and uh, particularly looking at uh, evacuating uh, vulnerable individuals such as the elderly, uh, low-income populations, uh, households that don't have access to a vehicle, maybe don't have access to the internet, or uh, are, are more difficult to communicate and make sure are out of harm's way. Uh, in addition to my department, the Houston Galveston Area Council is also what's called the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the region, and that means that we coordinate uh, transportation planning, uh, with TxDOT, Harris County, Harris County Toll Road, uh, all the local governments, and we in fact distribute uh, certain categories of the federal transportation funds uh, to projects that are submitted uh, by all those entities and more. And so we've been working to make sure that we have a good regional evacuation plan in place 
and then that has shared out to the community and particularly in those populations that we feel are at risk of being stranded uh, in the event of the need for an evacuation. Recovery is uh, something that uh, I'm spending a lot of time working on right now. Uh, one of the things that uh, regional councils and HGC in particular are, are, I think, very good at is aggregating and disaggregating uh, different funding sources. So post-Hurricane Rita and uh, post-Ike and now post-Harvey, uh, we have been tasked with uh, administering some of the housing programs, uh, particularly for some of our smaller jurisdictions. Uh, Houston and Harris County, uh, Fort Bend County, some of the others have, have large staffs that are uh, conversant in big federal grants and administering housing programs. Um, you know, some of our other smaller counties and cities don't have these resources. So in the case of Rita and Ike, uh, we actually administered the housing rehabilitation and repair programs uh, outside of Houston and uh, partially in Harris County. And then in Hurricane Harvey, we've been working along with the general land office and the, um, the uh, FEMA folks uh, to get people into temporary housing, uh, such as mobile home units or trailers. So even though we're mostly a planning agency, we do have that direct public service aspect to our work. Uh, and it is uh, really heartbreaking, but uh, hopefully also hopeful uh, that we've been able to get uh, a lot of people into temporary and even permanent housing or, or repair and make their existing housing less vulnerable. Uh, the other thing I've been working on, particularly this week, and including meeting right after this one, is uh, we have been tasked with uh, developing what's called a method of distribution for the federal funds available for housing buyouts and infrastructure. Again, this is outside of Houston and Harris County, but uh, we will be the ones who develop the formula to decide, say, how much Wharton County gets, or ANAWAC or whatnot, based on their damage and other factors that are set by the region. So uh, again, I think we are a place where people come together and can debate how those larger blocks of funding should be cheered out uh, to provide assistance where it's needed most. Hazard mitigation, uh, the next part again, uh, Houston, Harris County, some of our larger jurisdictions uh, have large staffs that are doing uh, hazard mitigation plans. Uh, these plans are important for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is to qualify them for certain categories of federal funding. Uh, the project has to be uh, included in a FEMA and state approved hazard mitigation plan. So we have for the past year or so been working with the counties uh, shown in that bulleted list uh, to update their hazard mitigation plans. And so far we have over a thousand recommended mitigation actions. And I would say probably about half of these are, are infrastructure related, but uh, there are a lot of other categories in there too. And I think the two things that people are looking at uh, the closest are you know, what sort of technical resources exist, uh, what sort of public awareness programs uh, can we institute, and then finally, uh, I think there's, there's growing interest, and Harris County has been doing this for a while, but there's growing interest in looking at opportunities for buying out repetitive loss structures. And then into the squishier part, if you will, uh, no pun intended, uh, we really have three programs that I would say are, are kind of more at the conceptual resiliency level, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about each of these. First of all, we have a Regional Flood Management Council uh, that is comprised largely of floodplain managers, but also some, some public works and, and flood control officials from our 13 counties. Uh, th this group was deliberately constructed as uh, more of a coordination and information sharing type group. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more on why that was uh, a few slides down. But uh, basically one of the big tasks this group has uh, been involved with, uh, as well as hosting events such as today's for our flood management professionals, is to develop a flood management handbook 
that really uh, we think is kind of a soup to nuts approach, uh, not only in terms of, of uh, regulatory policies, but also planning uh, and communication with the public. You'll see uh, the date on that is 2009. So we are right now in the process of, of updating this book post Harvey. Uh, we think it's high time. Uh, I'll also say that there is, is a growing interest on the part of our flood management council members for maybe looking at a little bit more elevated role uh, for this group in the region, uh, again, to be defined. Uh, several years ago, we received a major grant from the Department of Housing and Urban Development to develop a uh, sustainable development plan. And this was really a, a large partnership of all our local governments plus nonprofits, academic institutions, community organizations. We had uh, about 15,000 people participate in various meetings we had uh, and public events throughout the region. We had about 8,000 people respond to an online survey. And uh, we, we got hundreds of ideas out there, but we really wanted to make this into something that you could uh, easily repeat, maybe not on a short elevator ride, but you know, in the type of two-minute briefing that you might have uh, access to uh, decision-maker in. And so we, uh, we developed recommendations centered around six big ideas. And if you're interested in the, the other ideas, uh, you can go to ourregion.org, and uh, you can see everything in the plan and a lot of ancillary documents. But I want to tell you one of the six big ideas, even before uh, resiliency was uh, as, as front and center as it is today, uh, was indeed resiliency. And these, these were the six elements that uh, our, our vast uh, public engagement and stakeholder uh, uh, outreach said we should look at. Uh, obviously this isn't a storm surge conference, but uh, I think everyone we're talking about in terms of, of flood management and mitigation uh, needs to be integrated with, with the regional storm defense system approach. Uh, we looked at how can we rapidly get people back into housing. We did a pilot program uh, on that area of uh, our other ways we could expedite. You know, it's nine months out and we still haven't housed everybody in a temporary structure yet. What are some ways we could speed that up? Uh, evacuation planning, mitigation, public awareness, uh, we also include reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that's more of an adaptation strategy than resilience, but uh, that was, was something that our partners felt should be in there. And I'm pleased to say that there are, are things going on, uh, perhaps uh, to lesser extent in some than others uh, in, in each of these areas in the plan. And I think that will only be accelerated after Harvey. And then finally, like I said, we're, we're uh, not exactly uh, set up to be a think tank, but uh, some years back we, we created something called the Foresight Panel on Environmental Effects. And uh, it, it also may produce an unfortunate acronym, but uh, that was the name that, uh, that our board of directors uh, chose to, to use. Uh, one might question environmental effects of what? And uh, it was uh, climate change, but we didn't, uh, we didn't feel climate change would give this report necessarily a favorable reading in all quarters. But in fact, uh, we did have uh, an expert panel that included climate scientists, uh, uh, academicians in, in engineering and public policy uh, future studies. Uh, we had Mike Talbot, then director of Harris County Flood Control District, Alan Clark, our, our transportation director. So we really wanted to look and bring together, sort of like this conference is doing, the science side, you know, the engineering and practical side, and the policy side. Uh, look at the assumptions, uh, look at some, what I would characterize as bathtub GIS vulnerabilities, and, and come up with some general recommendations for local governments uh, that could uh, be adaptation and mitigation measures. Uh, we're also uh, thinking it might be high time to update this report post Harvey as well. Now, I saw a little bit of the presentation just preceding mine, and uh, I, I have 
map envy coming on. Uh, but I think one of the important roles that HGAC plays is, is really a data clearinghouse. So you know, all the cool products that uh, you all are looking at today can be served out to uh, our member governments and decision makers in, in one centralized source. So I'm very proud of the fact that right after Harvey, uh, we were able to put up a lot of different data sources and uh, we use uh, ArcGIS and, and really wanted to make these sources come alive so that they could be user-defined geography and queries. I'm going to just show you a few demos of this. Uh, this is uh, Harvey flooding against vulnerable populations. And again, uh, if, if you go onto this interface, uh, you can turn on and off different map layers. Uh, you can zoom in. And really our idea is to take this out of, uh, no offense to Shara, take this out of the GIS specialists at HGAC's hands and, and put it into your hands even if you don't have GIS or a lot of acumen in that area. Uh, here's just another one showing uh, severity of damage and uh, rainfall amounts. Uh, I just picked those out because the colors contrasted nicely, but you can turn on uh, any different number of these and you can also do some specific queries so for example if you wanted to look uh, individually at uh, population in an area that had a high number of claims uh, you could click on that zone and, and find the uh, population and some demographic information on it as well and I have learned uh, over the years that uh, I'm, I'm not as brave as the prior speaker in terms of doing live demos, uh, but you can also do user-defined geography in, in summaries of this information. You know, we too have, uh, I think, some pretty good aerial imagery, and you can overlay floodplain, floodway data, uh, look at buildings. We, we looked at the post-Harvey aerial imagery, and I kind of like the cool 3D view there. But uh, we, we didn't want to be too directive in terms of, of you know, uh, putting this up in any given format. We, we just wanted to get it out there as fast as we could. And uh, we'd be very interested uh, if, if you want to communicate with me later on anything you'd like us to share on the website. The other thing we would really like you to do is uh, play around with these tools. Uh, the only way we get better, we're, we're not web designers by training, we're, we're planners and GIS analysts, but uh, we, we'd like to see what real users think of the features and the functionality and, and the user friendliness. So it's, it's really going to be a wiki system. We, we benefit by your corrections of our, our mistakes and uh, maybe short-sightedness uh, in terms of how it be used. Uh, just a couple of things. This is one of Tushara's projects uh, looking at impervious cover. Uh, this was for a forestry project we did a couple years ago. Oh, okay, I guess that's my last data slide, so now I can get away from my envy and uh, get into my big picture closing remarks. I talked, uh, I talked before about, you know, we're, we're still kind of living into this idea of, of regional approaches to things. Uh, I was at a conference one time, I was telling Cheryl, and the speaker said, if, if what you're doing isn't hard, it probably isn't regional planning. So dealing, dealing with uh, you know, almost 150 municipal jurisdictions, 13 counties, uh, I've heard different figures on municipal utility districts, but let's, let's say 750 to 1,000, uh, plus a myriad of state agencies, navigation districts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think people are a little bit leery of, of lots of other broad regional government programs. Uh, the other thing, though, is we don't, we don't really have the capability to do, uh, I would say, planning with direct implementation power attached to it uh, for flood management. And this is a map of, of the major drainage basins in our region, and uh, I'm just going to say that we, we might want to take a look at, and, and whether HGAC is the lead, or maybe the state water planning groups, or maybe some newly created entity, uh, we might want to take a look at some sort of limited purpose planning and impl implementation functions 
that could be handled at the watershed or uh, basin level. It, it just seems like it might be time to adjust our thinking to that. Uh, you know, even if you take some of these basins, uh, you might be dealing with 50 plus jurisdictions, but it's, it's a place to start. And, and we're going to keep uh, trying to uh, further that dialogue among our member governments. Next thing I'd like us to think about, and it's, it's a buzzword, but uh, I think it's an apt buzzword, is, you know, let's, let's look at this holistically. And I don't want to suggest that we're not already doing a good job of coordination at federal, state, regional, and local level, but it, it kind of becomes like 3D chess. Uh, you, you've got all these levels of entities that design and fund projects, and then you've got to also take a look at, gee, what, what if the next time you know, we did a major freeway widening or uh, some other sort of infrastructure project, uh, we, we looked at floodwater conveyance uh, just as a part of that, not, not just mitigating for the project, but really linking that up uh, with some of our flood management. You know, what if we tried to get a little bit more standardization of, uh, dare I say, development policy on things like retention and elevation and uh, some of the other requirements that are placed uh, within these watersheds. And then finally, you know, we spent, uh, almost embarrassed to say, uh, we, we spent over a million dollars on public outreach for that, our great region plan. It wasn't nearly enough. So when people talk about public awareness, I think it's great, uh, all these small-scale things we're doing. We're, we're almost as big as the state of Washington, state of Arizona. Land area is bigger than the state of Massachusetts. I mean, if we really want to do public awareness in this region, it's, it's going to cost money. Uh, if you really want to get to people, we, we need to be thinking a lot bigger. Uh, I think we can do some things better with the resources we have, but uh, let, let's think big about that. Let's, let's think about, uh, you know, next time we get a trillion or so gallons, uh, how could we uh, maybe keep some of that around for the next drought that could come the next year? And I think we've done a good job of, of really understanding that uh, parks and green space and, and flood mitigation uh, ought to be connected. But we, we need to amp that up, in my personal opinion, uh, in all of these areas. And I think that uh, it's, it's places like this and other opportunities to dialogue with each other that we need to get that idea out there too. Finally, uh, you know, Native Clearinghouse, uh, We'll, we'll take anything any of you would like us to serve up. Uh, we would love to collaborate with you. Uh, I think some of it is actually hard data, but some of it's soft data too. We don't really have a good inventory of what all the local policies are. And I think it would be great if people knew within a watershed, you know, what's just in, in a summary of certain things, you know, what, what are the detention requirements? Uh, what are the development rules? Um, I think modeling tools are advancing uh, swiftly, but we really need to have, uh, I think, the ability to do some more what-if analysis. If we're looking at buyouts, uh, if we're looking at regulatory changes, our policymakers really need to know, you know, what, what are the costs and what are the benefits of those, and not in a long-term environmental impact statement study, but more of a desktop get you in the ballpark. Uh, we, we really have the tools and expertise to do that. Uh, what we don't have, though, is, is really any sort of a centralized body that can bring all this together. I don't think we necessarily need to have you know, that exist in a place like HGAC or a state organization, uh, not to get too Star Trek on you. Uh, I think we need a federation. I, I would call on all of us, uh, you know, in the different spheres we uh, operate in, whether it be professional societies or uh, academic institutions, uh, government, uh, nonprofit organizations, business organizations, to uh, think about how can we come together and, and put all this information that we've got uh, into the ability for us to, to have those quick turnaround policy tools and what if 
so we can inform the discussions uh, going forward to making us uh, a more resilient region. What's our role in all this? Uh, again, we're, we're a little bit of a, you know, we'll, we'll respond to the needs uh, represented by our, our member governments, but uh, I think the three things that you can bet on is uh, we'll, we'll be a willing convener, uh, we'll be a willing data aggregator and disaggregator, and uh, I hope going forward uh, we'll play a bigger role as a priority setter for the region. So, you know, who was in charge of the Cajun, Cajun Navy? Uh, I don't know that anybody was uh, in particular, but I would say it worked out pretty well. And uh, in my own neighborhood, uh, I saw people in kayaks, fishing boats, uh, inflatable mattresses. Uh, that was in conjunction with formal rescue efforts. But I think everybody knew what the objective was. Uh, and I'll just leave you with, uh, I think we all know here what the objective is too. Uh, but let's let's get together in that federation uh, so we'll be a little bit better prepared the next time. So I will leave my contact info up there and I would encourage you to check out our uh, regional flood information system and uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments. And thank you again for having me today. I've really enjoyed it. Time for easy questions. We have time for easy questions. Easy question? Yes. Oh, microphone makes it easier. Okay. I see that Jefferson County is not included in your council. You know, Jeff Jefferson County was just devastated by Hurricanes Rita and Harvey. Or if they're included in a, a similar council, because they have limited resources. Yes. Uh, they are the uh, Southeast Texas Regional Planning Council. And uh, I know that there was, was hope that they and uh, the other council down towards Victoria would be able to be here today. But uh, they, they are on the case, uh, but they are a separate organization from ours. Thank you. Additional easy questions? Or maybe medium, medium hard. No one in the audience? Then I have a question for you. Looking at the floodplain management handbook, that was done in 2009, and you helped update from Harvey. And I guess also the, the greater region effort you said needed to be updated also. Perhaps the floodplain management one would be a better one to look at. The, the question is, what do you think worked in that, and what did, was overlooked? You know, I think uh, if I were to say what uh, worked in it, uh, you know, mo most of our municipal governments uh, with, with the wherewithal and, and capacity, uh, I think are, are pretty progressive in, in moving forward uh, in all this. Uh, I would say that there are places that just don't really have the resources, and then counties are sort of a different kettle of fish as far as what they can do in terms of, of development regulation. So, uh, I don't know that we're going to be updating the recommendations per se uh, in that book a, a great deal, uh, but I think what we are going to do is have more of a frontispiece piece about the policy environment and, and capabilities, and, and the two things that jump out at me are just looking at county authorities, and then is, is there any place for some other sort of an entity in a watershed? Uh, if you've got a small community where you know, that the city manager may also be the light bulb changer. Uh, the other thing I think is just the integration with, with larger flood management rules. And, you know, we're, we're fortunate to live in Harris County with, with a freestanding, well, semi-freestanding and, and uh, funded flood control district. Uh, Fort Bend County has a countywide drainage district. Uh, I think at least one of our other counties is, is looking at that. But you get beyond that, and, and we're looking at uh, very narrow scope drainage districts that maintain drainage channels, uh, large populations in unincorporated areas, uh, kind of thin county staffing with a lot else to do. So, you know, when we think about things that flood control is doing, uh, just in our organization, we've got to look at what does is, what is Waller County do? What does Austin County do? What does 
chambers county do and i think just finding a way to get that sort of capacity uh, region-wide would be important one other point not to belabor your question the other thing i think that we didn't do enough of in that book is is talk about how these things integrate with one another because uh, I, I just have heard a lot of people think about this as, as there's got to be a magic bullet uh, I view it as a magic buckshot approach. Yes, we need reservoirs, yes, we need to complete the bayou projects, but how the, the local urban drainage system ties into that is, is also hugely important. Uh, how regulation ties into what we design to is hugely important. And then the public, you know, like uh, uh, Steve Costello and sweep the drains and just well, what can you do on your property to make the system? Now, I don't think we, we got that in, in the last update, so that's going to be a major emphasis for us too. Well, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate you being here today.